Hey everyone, welcome back. So this episode is all for the guys because I keep hearing guests say, hey, when are you gonna have uh, an episode from me? So um, this is it. So I am bringing you Daniel Harold today. He is a divorced guy over 40. I'm not gonna ask his age because that would be impolite. <laughs> But he started a blog and an Instagram page on a whim for other divorcees who were 40 and 50 plus years navigating the crazy world of newfound and unexpected singleness. And what he's been doing, um, quite frankly, has just been blowing up. So this turned into so much more than just an online space or an Instagram page. And it's turned into events that are being hosted across the country um, that involve happy hours and axe throwing and all kinds of fun stuff. So I wanted Daniel to come on today um, and he graciously accepted to talk about what it is that he's doing and his own divorce journey because um, you know, it's not just the women who struggle through divorce uh, and have great stories of reinvention. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, Renee. No problem. So let's just start with um, why you start. So your Instagram page is called Divorce Over 40 that you actually started with a couple other people. Um, why don't you just tell me a little bit about that and what inspired you and what was the intention behind it? You know, there was, that's a great question. And I get that a lot. And there really wasn't any um, intention at all uh, as far as what we wanted to accomplish from it. So this early this summer, there was a group of about six of us friends that were kind of hanging out. We were all kind of tired of dating. All of us were divorced in our forties and we had a couple that were creeping into the fifties and we just were having a lot of fun and just being friends and we were doing everything together. And we thought, why don't we create an Instagram account just to kind of chronicle our life. And we, so we set up this divorced over 40 Instagram account in August and each of us wrote about, something about our divorce and instead of kind of a self-deprecating social fun account we were all really raw and transparent and really talked about the struggles that we went through there was another guy so there's two men and four women and you know we all had pretty big networks to begin with so we started sharing and sharing it and you know the feedback was just overwhelming just as more about just you know, validation of, oh my gosh, I went through this too. I, I didn't, I can't assume, I didn't assume that anybody else experienced this because we're all, you know, every one of us in our divorce journeys in most cases are all, feel like you're all on this little island mm -hmm. and it's hard to connect with others and know, and what I feeling is what I'm feeling normal or is it, am I just weird? And so <laughs> it kind of evolved the whole thought process to, well, maybe, we could do something that's good here. And it's just kind of blown up after that. I mean, that's such a great point that you bring up because everyone who goes through a divorce says the same thing. It's like, they're not talking about it. They're not sharing it because they are completely alone. It's only them. They have shame. They have guilt. They have all of the things. So to bring other people together and say, let's really be open about it is such a service. And you're doing it from like, like when you and I spoke before you had said, you're like, Hey, I'm just a normal guy. Like I'm not an expert in the <laughs> field. Like I'm talking about this from not from like the lens that I might have, um, but from a lens of like, yeah, I went through it and it kind of sucked. And here's, here's my story. I think that that's a good point, Renee. And I think honestly, that's what the draw is, is that, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of good people out there through social media um, that are experts in the field and they provide good counsel, whether it's being a divorce coach or a therapist or, you know, attorney, but there's not, at least, I haven't found everyday people kind of telling their story. And so we've kind of created this community where people can kind of express themselves and none of us are experts. We all have a different journey in which we went through our divorce. A lot of, a lot of it bad and a lot of it good. And I think that's what's been refreshing to people is that it's just everyday people telling their story. So how did this turn into in-person events? Well, uh, you know, <clears throat> I almost want to whisper this to you because, but I, you know, since I'm in the public airs, I mean, we were very social during COVID. So I'll just admit that. Um, <laughs> Tulsa, right. Oklahoma, where I'm from is a, is a fairly um, 
had a very liberal um, approach to the COVID. And so, and we did a lot of things in our homes and we would post a lot of the social activities that we were doing. And as we started to build this community, we'd start getting messages from people that we didn't know that said, hey, can I come to your event? And which we were like, wow, I mean, people, people want to come, um, but we didn't feel comfortable inviting a bunch of strangers to someone's house. Right. And so we decided, well, let's put together a happy hour in Tulsa and let's be very explicit that this, this event is not about dating. It's not a dating mixer. If, if that's what you're coming in for, don't come. This is all about creating friendships and meeting new people. And we kind of set that preface and, you know, we had about 20 people come. What was interesting about the first one is that every one of those people knew nobody. So they, you know, they were yearning so much for connection and community that they're like, I'm going to come, even though it's going to be awkward and I don't know anybody. And um, I thought that was really cool. And we see that every time we're now in our fourth and fifth, I think we're now in our fifth happy hour here in Tulsa. That number has grown uh, nearly 5X. We actually, you know, it's a very large group now. We have name tags so that that makes people feel comfortable which that was kind of an, you know, it's, it's, we're kind of the guinea pig here where we're trying a lot of different things, but um, there were two things that have kind of come that always surface at the end of the day, Renee. And one is people want to feel validated. Like we discussed, yeah. I want to know that what I experienced and what I felt is something that other people have, because it makes me feel better that I'm not weird or I'm not overly depressed or I'm not too emotional. And then the second one is I need friends. Yeah, I that's a good community. point. I want, I want to hang out with people that have gone through the same experiences that I have, so I don't have to explain it every time. Yeah. And that was the, a big piece, that, and now we're really driving the community piece of it. And why that's so important is when people go through a divorce, they tend to lose friends because they are couples, friendships, no, they're not no longer invited out anymore because it's weird for the other couple and you know how that's how they view it. And a lot of times the friends go with or take sides or end up just gravitating towards one side or the other. And you're right. Like that was my own experience. Like I was in a state that all of my friends were my exes. And like, I had no friends. So it was, you know, I turned to, to yoga and forming a community there. And that's how, where my friendships came from, but this is so valuable for that reason. So rather than sitting home and like brooding and maybe crying that you don't have your kid that weekend, like this gives you something to do and something, a way to connect with people. Um, and that's, that's huge. So talk a little bit about, um, cause I know that you're talking about expanding this to other cities and other States. And I think you might already have done that. You talk a little bit about that. That's the crazy part of it. So for some reason, everybody thinks we're cool because they want to come hang out with us. <laughs> and so we kind of solved the local issue with, okay, well, let's just have events at public venues where people can meet. What's really cool as a side note is we're starting to see little friendship groups spawn off on that, where a group of five or six go do it in van and then they post it on the page. And, it's and that's what we intend. We want to create like a venue where everybody can meet, but you're not going to be friends with 75, 100 people. You're going to find your own little niche and hang out. And so we started to have out of town people that, you know, a lot of this is driven by just organic feedback. And we had a lot of people from out of town saying, Hey, can I, I'd like to come to Tulsa to hang out with you. And we're like, <laughs> we're like, trust me, we're not that cool. We maybe, we maybe give a good perception of it, but we're not. And so then we came up with this idea of well, what if, what if we created an opportunity where people can replicate what we're doing in cities? And we kind of had like a point person or a point of contact and we call them city ambassadors. They're the ambassadors for the message that we're try trying to um, disseminate to the, to the nation or the world um, that we want to create community. And so the first ambassador was someone in Oklahoma City. They've now grown, we call it a tribe, not a chapter, because we're all about building a tribe. And so they've grown their group to like 50 to 75 people that they're starting to do events with. And we've now grown over the past six weeks. I think we have almost 50 city ambassadors. Wow. Across 40, 35 to 40 states and two, Canada, Kenya, and yesterday, Moscow. 
It's Holy, crazy. Holy, that's crazy. You're going to have people getting divorced just to join your <laughs> divorced <laughs> cool club. <laughs> someone's, yeah, someone's going to write an article about how we're big advocates of divorce. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's awesome. So what do you envision for the, the future for this uh, conferences, annual gatherings when when the world opens up again? You know, I think um, I think there's a, a, an unlimited amount of opportunities. And frankly, to, to your point, with the world opening up, what a lot of people are doing in a lot of cities where there is a lot of restriction is they're doing more um, virtual happy hours, you know, just to kind of get to know people, mm -hmm. people initially. And then once things open up, they'll, they'll obviously start to have events. Um, you know, I could see we we're tied to the hip with a lot of really good experts. So the content that we try to provide is everyday people. And we also try to blend in experts in certain fields like divorce attorneys, a sex therapist, mm. um, dating at some point, and so um, I think I could envision a conference where we try to bring people together. We wouldn't call it a conference. We'd probably call it a big party because um, we're very <laughs> social, you know, with with some speakers. Um, <laughs> right. That no one and, goes to because <laughs> yeah, exactly. everyone's at the bar. <laughs> but you know what's cool, it, Renee, is um, so one of our ladies that is up in like a small town in Wisconsin went to Phoenix to go visit friends and she connected with the a lady down there that it's, that's our city ambassador in Phoenix. And so I was telling these this group, this is kind of like my leadership team. There's, they're really like my cheerleaders is what they are. Um, I, I was like, you know, there, there might be a day that we you could travel anywhere across the country and connect with divorced mm -hmm. over 40 people if you wanted to. And that's that would be really cool. Yeah. So is there, in, now it's 40s and 50s. Um, are, are we like kicking out the youngins? No. Well, <laughs> I've had that question a lot. And I actually had to do a video to kind of address it um, because there's a whole genre of our, our group of people with, you know, there's, we've had people that have been in their late 30s that are like, I feel like I connect more with your group. We've had people in their 60s. We've had widowed widowers mm -hmm. that say, mm -hmm. you know, can I fit in? And we've had people that have frankly never been married before that are in their forties. And look, we're all about community. We all kind of go through the same experiences yeah. when we're, our, we're in our forties, fifties, sixties. And so, you know, I just say the more the merrier. We're, yeah. we're definitely open to everybody. And I think that by by highlighting that certain age group, and I, I, I think that that's because at that point in your life, you have sort of settled into what you think life is going to be like for the rest of it. And then you get, you know, you have your knees taken out and it's like, oh shit, like I've, I have to make all new friends. And how do you do that when you're 40? If you're 28, it's a little bit different and you show off a little bit different. So um, I think that that, I think it's brilliant to really focus on even though you're going to gather people from all different um, ranges, but so important. When you think about it, you're, it's almost like a rediscovery process. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, for me, I was married for 22 years. I had a certain lifestyle that I lived. My kids, I, we raised kids. I get divorced. You know, my daughter's graduate. My youngest daughter is graduating from high school. So I'm going to be an empty nester. And now I'm like, I'm free. I can do yeah. whatever I want. So part of the, so I think that when you're in that 40s and 50s, you're at that age where you kind of are like, okay, what's next to my chapter? Because I planned on being married yeah. and continuing on into the next empty nester stage, but now my knees have been cut out from under me. What am I going to do? And that's where the kind of the self-discovery and self-care pro process goes in. And we're just big advocates that what people try to do to find connection when they first get divorced when they don't have friends is they date. Yeah. That's where they're seeking connection and they're seeking validation. And they, they, you know, look, we all like people that like us. And so, but a lot of times that's very unhealthy yeah. because you're, you haven't healed yet. You haven't discovered yourself. Why would you get into a serious committed relationship with someone potentially when you haven't even figured out what you want in life, let alone what you want your new partner to be like. And so we're, I'm a big advocate for look, you know, dating's okay during that phase, but just know it it's casual. You're just yeah. exper experimenting and you're having fun and really focus on self-care, you know, healing, 
rediscovering what you want in your life and building a core friendship group. Now, did you jump back into the dating world really quickly? And what was your experience with that? A lot of this is from my, my, my missteps. <laughs> yes. So again, you know, my history was um, when I right at the, our divorce was very fast and um, I didn't have a lot of friends. And I, you know, a lot of that was, you know, the couple friends, but I didn't have any single guy friends. And so I did jump into dating and got into a couple of long-term relationships or committed relationships. I wouldn't say long-term that, you know, either fizzled out or they weren't healthy. And I realized very quickly that um, I'm not ready for something that's committed. And so I, but I still like to date. I still enjoyed it. And I still, so I was just very transparent with people, with the women that I courted of, look, I'm not looking for a committed relationship. I just got out of my divorce. If you'd like mm -hmm. to go enjoy my company and vice versa, let's do it. And that's not for everybody because different yeah. people are different stages. And so there's a lot of women that said, no, thanks. You're just out having fun. And there are others who are like, you know, I'm kind of in the same stage. And so my dating experience, I think from that point, when I finally realized I, I can't be serious at this point, I got to kind of collect myself, um, was a lot of fun. I met a lot of friends. It really, at the end of the day, I developed a lot of new friendships. Well, once COVID hit, kind of puts a stop to dating, yeah. right? And so then you, I'm really started reflecting on, okay, what do I really have to, what do I have at the end of the day? And I realized, you know, maybe I need to get my eye off that ball and really focus mm. on creating at least locally this core group of friendships. And that's when it all kind of started. So I have to ask you, because I think you said something so important about being upfront with going into the dating world and say, and I think this, this applies to, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman. I think it's so important. Like you went into it saying, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm not looking for. And just being open and having that communication. Um, how did you do that? Like, did you say it right from the beginning, the first phone call? Um, like, when did that come out? Because I think that that's the problem that people have is when they jump into these second relationships and they end up into maybe a second marriage or they're not being clear about what their needs are and where they are in that process. And they're trying to be liked, like you said, and then that's where the miscommunication happens and, you know, it, it sort of spirals. So what was your experience with that? You know, uh, a lot of it, some of it was just kind of trial and error and um, going into dating where you get into it a little bit and then you realize maybe I'm leading someone on um, or maybe I'm, uh, and so a lot of the initial dating, and again, my background is I, I never really dated ever in my life. Yeah. Married 20, married at, you know, started dating my ex at 19 years old. And then I had wow. a high school girlfriend. So, so you never had to like swipe left or right for the date. Never, never. Yeah, they didn't have <laughs> apps back then. <laughs> right. um, so, I, you know, I learned through a couple, I had a couple of really early kind of committed relationships that were less than three months each. And I realized, you know, I realized what I wanted and what I didn't want really early. And then I was like, you know what, I just need to be very transparent with um, anybody that I swipe with as far as <laughs> what I want and what I don't want. And I'll let them choose whether or not that's something that they want to participate in. And I dated a lot when I traveled. And so I traveled a lot for my business and I would set up dates in Chicago and LA and New York. And, and I would say that I'd say, look, I'm not there, there's there's so much so many men and I think women to some degree that just kind of put on this mask with online dating and you you end up getting involved with them or you meet them and they don't look anything like they mm. pictures or everything they told you is a lie or their intentions are different from what they presented on the front end and I just decided I'm just going to be completely transparent with everybody about here's who I am here's where I am in my stage you know, I'm coming into town. I'd love to go have dinner with you or go have drinks. And if that's something that interests you, great. But this isn't likely going to turn into anything that's going to be long term. And, um, you know, a lot of women would say, no, thanks. I'm not interested in that. But at least if the ones that did knew I was going in mm -hmm. what the expectation level was. And I think that's really important in dating is to set the proper expectation level and to tweak it as you go. Yeah. You know, I've dated some here in town 
where um, it's easier, right, to go on a second or third date. And if I didn't feel it the first date, it makes no sense to ghost or prolong the inevitable. Right. The ne very next day, I'd message them and say, you know, I really enjoy getting to know you. I don't think there's anything here romantically, but I'd love to stay as friends. And I just think it's, it's so much healthier just to be transparent, especially so in your true. 40s and 50s. We don't want to waste time. And, that, and so I think that's something that I've always kind of done that uh, in my dating life. So uh, what are your favorite apps that you use, dating apps? Let's do like a little assessment of the ones that you've used, the ones you like, the ones that you would recommend. You know, I get that question a lot about what people, um, people ask me, what do you think has been good? And I think, um, you know, it, it varies by city as I've learned. Mm -hmm. Certain apps are better in certain cities and even in countries too. And so, you know, if you use like, you know, Tinder as an example, it's kind of the international app. It's used pretty much everywhere in the world, um, most prominently. And then in the U.S., it's got this, you know, reputation of being the hookup app, right? Yeah. And so you kind of know what you get there. Um, and then you've got Hinge, and Hinge seems to be a more professional, lots of 40s and 50s. Um, you do have the ability to, if you're traveling, to, to change your location and start to connect with people in the place that you're visiting. Uh, Bumble now offers that too. And so that's a good app. I think Bumble is good because it gives the woman the control, which I think is important. Um, and so, you know, the woman doesn't get automatically harassed with, by all these messages um, from men and they can kind of control who they want to communicate with once they match. Um, those are probably, you know, Hinge and Bumble are probably the best. Not a big fan of Twitter, not a big fan of match.com. I used that initially when I came out and I think that that's kind of gone downhill. So those mm -hmm. are kind of the four or five that. I mean, there's a lot of options out there. A couple there's of them you so just many. said that I've never even heard of. I think Crazy. one pops up every day. And, yeah. you know, a lot of them have very small communities, you know, because they're growing and you just, you know, those four or five are going to have the, the largest population where you can see, get the maximum exposure to people that in your city, probably. Yeah. I interviewed a dating coach uh, a few days ago, and she had a great um, visual of what dating should look like when you first get divorced, when you're ready to do that. And it's kind of like a carousel. Just keep like, keep letting it go around and around and just have fun with it. And don't yes. get hung up on just dating one person. Like just keep go, letting it go around and, and keep in dating a lot of people, people who might not be your type um, and just have fun with it just to kind of reconnect with yourself again, rather than go right into something that turns into serious. And then it becomes all of the stuff that it, the drama and all the stuff that you don't want. And you should really just be rediscovering yourself in the dating world. And that may take, that may be a year or maybe yeah. 18 months. I mean, you think about it, you've, you, if you're, you come out of a divorce and you probably, if you're reflective, you think about, okay, here's things that I can improve on because I participated in this divorce. Yeah. And here's some things that maybe I don't want from a, from a new relationship based on what I got from my ex. Mm -hmm. so you kind of go into dating with those two th frames of mind, but a lot of it is experimenting. And I would tell, tell you that every date that you go on, especially if it's just more of a casual, you kind of get learn a little bit more about what you want and what you don't want. Yeah. It's so oh my important. gosh, I really like that about someone. I like the fact that she's career driven or I like the fact that he is a good dad, or mm -hmm. I really don't like this ha habit, or he drank a lot. You know, you just kind of, each one you, and you kind of, you kind of create this list, whether yeah. it's mentally or some people do it on paper, of here are the things that I want. Now, you know, you're never gonna find the unicorn. Nobody's ever right. gonna be perfect. But I think that if you, if you go in trying to look for the next committed relationship, you're not gonna go through that process to figure out what you want and what you don't want. And I think it's, it's grounds for failure. It's just not going to yeah. work. All right. So I have a final question for you before I ask it. Um, tell me how someone can get hooked up with divorced over 40. Where can they go to find you? How can they start their own chapter in their state if one isn't already started? Well, thank you for letting me uh, at least promo it. So <laughs> we drive everything from Instagram. 
which interestingly, my, my genre is more on Facebook, but we were seeing a lot more 40s and 50s on Instagram. The Instagram account is divorced over 40, which is four zero, divorced over 40. And just send us a DM there if you were interested in either starting a chapter or is there already a chapter? Mm -hmm. we, we get a lot of those and we just plug you in with the city ambassadors in Chicago and New York and Jacksonville, Florida, and, and they'll immediately get you plugged into whatever activities they're doing. Oh, I love it. It's such like I get asked so many times, like, how do I get over my divorce? How do I stop being angry? Like this, this is how show up and make invent, friends. connect, make friends. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love it. Okay. So final question. Do you believe in soulmates? You know, so another way you could ask that is, do you believe in butterflies? And I've never been <laughs> one that says I believe in butterflies. So I'm going to say, no, I don't believe in soulmates. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about soul matches? What is a soul match? Well, I, the way I look at it as there's multiple people for every person. So it's a person who's a good fit for you. It doesn't mean that that's the only person for you. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. I think I've met a lot of different women that I could be like, okay, if I was serious and I lived in that city or if I was at a different stage of my life, they fit. And it's not always the same person, yeah. description of the same person. So I, awesome. I agree with that one. All right. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Um, loved chatting with you. This is an awesome interview. All of the, um, all of the, your contact information will be in the show notes too. So I'm going to share this out and I, everyone who asks me that question about how do you move on, I'm going to send them your way to your website because I think that that really is the first step to kind of finding your way out the other side. So it's Thank an awesome service. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. No problem.